Good morning, respected teachers and my dear colleagues. I am Dr. Pradeep Venterpati, Assistant Professor Medical Oncology from Hoyuava Cancer Hospital, Vishakapatnam. So today I will be presenting the RETMAP trial, an international multi-center study on clinicopathologic features and treatment response in patients with NACLC and RET fusions. So we know that molecular drugs targeting mutated rearranged oncogene drivers have become the standard recognized treatment in patients with advanced NACLC. Activating red fusions are found in 1 to 2 percent of NACLC, mostly adenocarcinoma. So these fusions result in ligand independent constitutive activation of the red pathway and increased oncogenic signaling. So initially multi-kinase inhibitors were used to target red and recently selective red inhibitors have shown good anti-tumor efficacy. So it is exactly a decade since red has been designated as an activating driver oncogene in NACLC. And since it is very uncommon, this population subgroup has not been well characterized. So this is the precise aim of this RETMAP trial to evaluate and report real life data on patients affected by red positive NSCLC, their clinical and biological characteristics, response to different treatment modalities and survival. So this is a retrospective multi-center study including patients from 19 European centers with any stage red positive NSCLC with a known molecular profile either by DNA RNA sequencing and or fish analysis. The clinical, pathological, biological features and treatment outcomes including surgery, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, chemoimmunotherapy, multi-tyrosine carriers inhibitors and RET inhibitors were evaluated. So 149 patients were included in the study and the median age is uh, 61 years, 58% uh, were females, 45 patients, uh, percent of the patients had a history of smoking, 92% were adenocarcinomas and the median number of lines of treatment was 2. Upfront, 67% of the patients were metastatic with 19% of the patients having brain meds and at last follow up 30% of the patient had brain meds. KIF5B uh, is the most common fusion partner with RET with 71% followed by CCDC6 at 20%. Uh, PDL1 one were, uh, was uh, positive in 5% of the patients and the most frequent co-mutation was TP53 in 21%. Coming to the e efficacy of treatment, so 67% of the patients received selective RET inhibitors and they have the highest median PFS of 18 months and the uh, highest uh, median DOR of 21 months. Immunotherapy had a median PFS of 5 months with a median DOR of uh, 9 months and if you look at the multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors, it was only 2.8 months with a median DOR of 5 months. Even the ORR was highest with the RET inhibitors with 68% followed by platinum doublet at 55% and chemoimmunotherapy at 43%. So the overall survival, the median overall survival was highest in patients who were treated with selective RET inhibitors at 53 months compared with 17 months who did not receive RET inhibitors. Uh, the PDL1 in patients who are receiving immunotherapy, the PDL1 expression was numerically higher in non -re in responders compared to non-responders. So finally, the authors concluded that the patients with red positive NSCLC may have a smoking history and heterogeneous histologies. Selective RET inhibitor treatment improves survival in pretreated patients. Immune checkpoint inhibitors may be effective in selected patients and the role of predictive biomarkers needs to be further investigated. So what we can infer from this study is that selective RET inhibitors have good anti-tumor activity with survival benefit and efficacy which was actually seen in the trial setting has been replicated in the real world. Hence, red testing should be a part of standard diagnostic testing of lung adenocarcinoma to pass on the maximum benefit to the patients. And multi tyrosine kinase inhibitors which were previously used, they should be avoided probably given their poor activity and high toxicity and emphasis should be lay, laid on using uh, selective red inhibitors. Thank you.